All right, in the second half of our section 1-6, we start off with something that sounds a little familiar. We talked about the segment addition postulate, but now we're going to talk about the angle addition postulate. So remember the segment addition postulate was when you had little segment plus little segment that they were connected together equals the bigger segment that they really create. Well, we can do the same thing with angles. We can have one little angle with another little angle that's connected to it, if you will. For example, what do I mean in this picture that they are connected? Well, they're kind of both connected together at, if I can make this a little smaller here, both connected at ray OB, make a different color, there we go, that this angle and this angle, they're both connected at OB. So when you add together those two smaller uh, angles, together they make the whole angle AOC. All right, so that's what I've got here for the angle addition postulate. It works just like the segment addition postulate, except instead of saying segments, we say angles now. So now applying this particular postulate, what is the measure of angle ADC? Well, if I know this little angle is 34 and that little angle is 25, and ADC is the entire big angle, then really all I need to do to figure that out is to add these two angles together, which makes 59 degrees. So the measure of angle ABC is simply 59 degrees. And again, are you going to have a problem as simple as that? Of course you are not going to have a problem as simple as that. You will have stuff where it'll be more of an algebra problem. There is another type of uh, angle addition postulate, if you will. I call it the straight angle postulate, the SAP. Okay, we try and get some gangsta here, some SAP, some SAP, that basically says that if you have a straight angle, that really it's any number of angles. It doesn't just have to be two angles that are on a straight angle or a straight line make up 180 degrees. It could be more than two. So I could create another ray and create another ray that this angle, two, three, that all four of these angles together, since they all make up a straight angle or a straight line, they all add up to be 180 degrees, okay? So instead of just having angle AOC like we had before, we know specifically angle AOC is a straight angle, so we can automatically plug in the 180 degrees into its place, okay? And again, I call that the straight angle postulate, when you have a straight angle or a straight line. The angle addition postulate, use more when it's not a straight angle or straight line. Now some other vocab terms here. Vertical angles, all right? Vertical angles are angles opposite of each other when two lines cross. So let's say here's two lines, or we could say segments, it really doesn't matter here, but let's make it legit. Here are two lines across each other, and we're talking about angles that are opposite of each other. So if I talk about this angle that's created from those two lines, then this would be its opposite angle. Those would be vertical angles. And this angle up here, and this angle down here, those would be vertical angles. So for every two lines that cross, you will have two pair of vertical angles. And we will talk about something special about vertical angles when the time comes, okay? Just know how to identify vertical angles. Uh, adjacent angles are two angles side by side sharing a side and a vertex. Uh, this kind of looks like the example that I had with the angle addition postulate, okay? Uh, angle AOB and angle BOC, they are adjacent angles because they share a side and a vertex. They share this side, this ray, uh, OB, and they share this vertex, O. So I can, really, I could just make like one big angle here, if you will, and then just draw a ray anywhere in between those two. It doesn't really have to even be in between. It could be outside of it. We could put it there. And then we could say, all right, well, this angle and this angle, they are adjacent angles because they share this side and they share this vertex. And that would be an example of adjacent angles, okay? Adjacent angles could be like the straight angle postulate even, okay? These two angles are adjacent. They are side by side. They share a side and a vertex. They just also happen to add to be 180 degrees. So adjacent angles, it's not really important that you can identify them, but more so that you know that term. We will definitely use the term adjacent, uh, talking about adjacent sides or adjacent angles throughout the year. Complementary angles. Now, I know you guys have talked about complementary and supplementary. The one thing I want to emphasize are the number of angles that make up complementary and supplementary. 
Complementary angles specifically are two and only two angles that add up to be 90 degrees. Okay, so you could have, let's say, an 89 degree angle. Hey, that looks like a 90, but it's not a 90. I didn't put a box there. And I could have a super teeny tiny one degree angle. These two angles, they add up to be 90 degrees. Therefore, together, I may call them complementary. Now, complementary angles can be non-adjacent. They don't have to be side by side with each other. They could be pulled apart or they could be, let's say I've got this as an example, uh, 30 and 60. They could be adjacent angles, but again, they don't have to be. Adjacent or non-adjacent, it doesn't matter as long as there are only two angles and they add up to be 90 degrees, and those are complementary. Supplementary, again, two and only two angles that add up to be 180. Now, the straight angle postulate kind of looks like they could be um, supplementary angles. So let's draw this out here. Boom, 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 boom. Now, one thing that you may assume, one of the very few things that you may assume to be true in geometry, is that if something looks like it's a straight line, it is a straight line, okay? You don't have to sit there and go, well, it kind of looks like there's maybe a slight bend in it. You don't have to do that. Anything that looks straight is straight. So this thing is a straight angle, a straight line. So it does have 180 degrees. So we could call this angle one and angle two. And angle one and two together make up this straight angle, which therefore has 180 degrees. So angles one and two, they are adjacent. They are side by side. So not only could you call angles one and two adjacent, you would also call them supplementary, adjacent supplementary angles. And just like with complementary, they don't have to be adjacent. We could have this angle, which is, let's say, 120. And then this poorly drawn angle, uh, let's say it's 60 degrees. Well, 120 and 60 together makes 180. So these would be called non-adjacent supplementary angles. And that would be that. Now let me throw up one more example real quick here. Boop, 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 boop. Let's say we have angles 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we know that 1, 2, 3, and 4 all together make up 180 degrees. So those four angles do add up to be 180, but can we call them supplementary? No, we cannot, because supplementary means only two angles, and we have four here. So is there a special word for four angles that add up to be 180? No, only for two angles that add up to be 180. And I talked about this in the last video, so we will talk about just a little bit more our special congruent arc symbols, which I called arc marks. So for example, if I wanted to call these two angles here uh, congruent, then I just put one little arc mark on there and another little arc mark there to say that they are the same. Let's say in this picture, um, I wanted to say that this angle is congruent to that angle. Okay, notice I put two arc marks because I want them to be different than these two angles over here. So I'm saying these two are the same, these two are the same, but not all four of them are the same. All right, and then I want to say that these two angles are the same, but they're not the same as those other two. So I just continue on with the pattern. Okay, put three arc marks and three arc marks. So now I'm saying these two are the same, these two are the same, these two are the same, but none of them are the same as each other. All right. Um, an alternative here is once you get beyond three arc marks, it starts to get a little ridiculous to do four and five because then they really look jumbled. Uh, something else you could do, you could put one set of arc marks and then put a little like congruent uh, symbol, if you will, on those. So even though these have one arc mark and these have one arc mark, these have a special symbol on them. These do not. Therefore, they are not all four the same. Okay. Typically, you'll see one arc one pair of arc marks, two pair or three pair. If you need to go beyond three, then that's when you typically, you can do four and five if you like, or you can start to incorporate these symbols here, okay? You could also do, say, one set of arc marks with two congruent symbols, okay? I've seen that off and on, but not too often, only if you really need to do that. And the last example, the last slide we'll talk about in this video. Uh, identify vertical, adjacent, complementary, and supplementary angles, and I have misspelled supplementary. There we go. Uh, so vertical. Vertical are two angles that are opposite of each other when two lines cross. All right. 
So one quick and easy pair I see here would be angle 2 and angle 6, okay? Because angles 2 and 6 are formed when this line and this line cross each other, okay? So vertical, angle 2, and angle 6. They are vertical. Um, something else I see would be angles 1 and 5. They are vertical to each other. Angle 1 and angle 5. Alright, now let's talk about some things that may look like that may look like vertical angles, but they're not. What about what about um, angle one and angle four? They're kind of opposite of each other, right? But here's the thing: are they are those two angles created from just two straight lines? And here's what we need to look at. Angle 1 is created from this line and from this line. Is that what also creates angle 4 on the other side? No, that makes angle 5. Angle 4 uses this kind of ray right here, which angle 1 doesn't use at all. So 1 and 4, they kind of look like they're vertical angles, but they're really not. Okay, so that doesn't work out there. Um, I mean, you could go on a stretch here and say that angles three and four together are vertical to seven. You know, that would work. Uh, but that's typically something we don't discuss. Usually vertical angles are usually two and only two, just like with complementary and supplementary. Um, adjacent. There are many examples here, and we're not going to discuss too many of them. But, you know, we could say, hey, angles one and two, they're adjacent. They're side by side. Uh, angles three and four, they're adjacent. Two and three, et cetera, et cetera. Complementary. Two angles that add up to be 90 degrees. Hmm. Well, I know angle 7 is 90 degrees, but that's only one angle, so that's not going to work. So what two angles add up to be 90, how do I know that's true? Okay, here's where you need to start using a little bit more logic, a little bit more thinking than you may normally do. Let's talk about this line right here. Now, that's one thing I told you you could assume is true. Anything that looks like a straight line is a straight line. So we're saying that these three angles down here all must add up to be 180 degrees. Okay, Angles 5, 6, and 7 must be 180 degrees. Well, you know angle 7 is 90, right? Which means how big are 5 and 6 together? They must be the other 90 to make the full 180. So we've kind of proven indirectly that angles 5 and 6, we don't know specifically how big they are, if they're 45, 45, or maybe 40 and 50, or 30 and 60, we don't know. But we know that they must add to be 90 degrees. Now we could also, at this point, if we know these two angles are 90, oh, let's do this. I could put a little 90 degree box over both 5 and 6. Now we could use the same logic approach with this line right here, and say, well, if we know 5 and 6 are add up to be 90, what's got to be true about 3 and 4? Well, they must add up to be 90. So we could put a 90 degree box over 3 and 4 together. And then the same thing is going to hold true for angles 1 and 2. They must also add up to be 90. And again, we don't know the specific values for those individual angles, but we know together they add up to be 90. All right, the last one here, supplementary angles. Two angles that add up to be 180. A little bit of a problem here. Let's consider this line. We know these three angles, 1, 2, and 7, add up to be 180. But supplementary said two and only two angles. So we're kind of stuck here. Um, you know, we could talk about this line and say that 5, 6, and 7 add up to be 180. But that's three angles again. So really, with supplementary... None exist in this example. There are no two angles that add up to be 180 degrees. You are just stuck with that fact there. Okay? And that is all for section 1.6. We are done with the chapter! Yay! That means tests will be coming up shortly. Adios and goodbye.